For today's creature feature, we begin this video near Austin, Texas. Welcome back to the channel and welcome if it's your first time. All right, all right, all right. It is so great to be back in the Lone Star State of Texas again. It is very windy and chilly out here today, making it hard. It's gotta be hard to create this video, but we've gotta get her done. I am here to check off my bucket list. I have always wanted to track down the filming locations to one of the most horrifying, grotesque films ever created the film that started it all way before its time we're talking about toby hooper's the original texas chainsaw massacre filmed right here in the greater austin area actually there's a lot of ground to cover i'm going to be traveling a lot today and as you can see the wind is just not letting us go not letting down but we're gonna do it i've always wanted to come out here and track down these locations and many of them have disappeared and or are disappearing so I had to get out here quick so I thought I'd make this the first filming locations video in 2022 here on this channel I knew I had to get back for chainsaw baby I'm a huge fan of this film check it out I got my leather face right there on this t-shirt which I've had for years man this is the film that started it all what an honor to be out here and track down these locations today with you guys. So I dedicate this one to all those Chainsaw fans out there. But let's do it. Let's begin the video. I am Tampa J. And there is much ahead. Oh yeah. Here we come, Leatherface. Here we come. I'm gonna try to show a lot of Leatherface matchups today. How about that? And as I was doing the intro, my hat flew over the fence. Thankfully I didn't have to hop the fence. There was a gap right here between this old barbed wire fence and the chain link. Got my hat, all right. And for our first Texas Chainsaw Massacre filming location, we come to a town called Leander to 400 North Baghdad Road to the Baghdad Cemetery. So during this video, I will be showing you the screen grabs from the movie comparing the then filming location to the now filming location. And right here is the very first opening shot of the movie when the corpse that the grave robber posted up on what was a fake gravestone, movie magic, that was placed right here actually, just before the road. But this is the very first filming location of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You can identify this piece right here, this headstone right there from the screen grab. A good 30 to 40 seconds, maybe a minute, you see that corpse. It starts off on its head and then it zooms out to the widest angle, which I'm recreating right now. And when Sally is walking through the cemetery with the gentleman in the red shirt and the cowboy hat, they walk right by the same tombstones again. Right here, here, and here. And this one right here, this little green up here on the top right of that headstone can be identified very easily in the screen grab. You only see a little portion of this right here. But yeah, they walk right here precisely. I had to pause the screen just right, but in this screen grab as the 1972 Ford van is coming down the former farm road out there. You can make out this headstone, this headstone, this headstone, and this one right here. I'll zoom in in a second, but that one says Pickle. And there it is today, Pickle. It's a unique angle, this camera angle. It was up, high up, and kind of shooting down at an angle, so it was able to, to get all those headstones into frame. But there you go, Pickle. The van would have been coming just like that white SUV and would have parked actually right down here across from this present day plaza. Back during the time of the film, the road was actually a lot closer to the cemetery. Actually, this is the old entrance and there was a chain link fence that ran parallel this way and the van actually would have came up and parked before the truck and those people out there about in this area right here. And look, there's remnants, there's an old post 
of the former chain link fence and as you can see in the movie they pulled up right before a ditch that was in between the fence and the road that ditch has been filled in i'm guessing there's uh sewers out here now before they had drainage in the ditches but yeah the van would have parked out here in this area in texas chainsaw massacre i want to remind you all to bear with me when i come to these filming locations i like to be thorough and point out the nooks and crannies the details so it's going to be a long-winded video as most of my filming locations are but i don't want to leave anything out not saying I'm gonna capture everything, but I'm gonna bring up everything that I see and find. And for the next filming location, we come to Kingsland, here in Texas Hill Country. We are about 61 miles away from the original location that the house, the Sawyer home, was moved. It was moved here to Kingsland. The house now called Grand Central Cafe. I'm coming up on it right now. Oh my gosh, that's it. Oh man, I'm so excited. And the signage sits before the driveway of the former Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. A little history here. The Victorian house at the Antlers Hotel built around 1909. This Queen Anne style cottage originally stood on Quick Hill in Williamson County now Round Rock, Texas. I will match up some screenshots as we're approaching and then eventually go inside. But here's a screen grab of Sally and the hitchhiker running down the driveway at the end of the film. And the truck, the old man's truck, right here below the entrance. Now I know it wasn't here, but the house is what I'm matching up the most. It is the same exact house from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I believe it was split in six or seven pieces to be moved all the way out here. Now you have to use your imagination, but notice the window right here in the corner and, and the porch behind Leatherface. Here's a screenshot. He would have been coming down the former steps in between the house and the old truck. And what is cool about this screen grab is that you can make out the Texas license plate as you see Leatherface running with the chainsaw. I thought that was very cool. Well, he would have brushed by the house right here. And I'm standing where I think the swing set, about the same vicinity the swing set would have set on the former property when Pam gets up out of the swing set and she walks towards the door for the first time after Kirk had disappeared. The camera was on a 18 foot track and the cameraman, Daniel Pearl, actually laid on that track and was slid underneath the swing as Pam got up and you have that iconic shot of her walking this way and the camera, the house just getting bigger into frame up to the front door. And I took a screenshot of that moment just to put things into perspective as I was explaining it. There's Pam walking in that shot, that iconic shot I was just mentioning, and here is the house today. And here is where this moment happened. She almost got away, ran out the front door, he grabbed her, took her back, and put her on that hook back in the kitchen. Now there's people eating in there right now, so I don't know if how many locations I'm going to be able to film inside but I'm definitely gonna ask and see what I can do. And I'm standing about the same location the camera would have sat back in 73, the time that they've made the film. Leatherface taking the chainsaw to the former door. You can make out the window to the left, the window above the door, everything matches up. Right here, Leatherface with his chainsaw on the front porch. Right there. And here is Jerry trying to find everyone where did everyone go but i thought this was a good screen grab to show you to show you that the railing and the banister is the same and also you can in this screen grab you can make out this clear as day too the entire entryway to the house then and now and i just put something together at the former location of this house it used to sit east and west and now it faces north and south. But check it out, these two windows, actually this whole side of the house can be seen a couple times in the movie, but I've got a 
photograph of Jerry right here walking to the front of the house. You can make out these two windows of the front room here. This tree's in the way, but Jerry, as I paused it, would have been standing right here in between these two windows. And that definitely matches up right there. Bear with me, I'm showing every angle I can from the screenshots. Now on the back side, this right here would have been the kitchen back in the day. I think it's still the kitchen, but that's where Pam was hung on the hook by Leatherface. And this portion was not there. This was built on, this structure. But that window up there is the window that Sally jumped out of. That's at the top of the staircase. She jumped out that window and then Leatherface pops his head out and his chainsaw, she falls down before the former steps back at the old location and runs out this way. Now, you gotta use your imagination towards the barbecue stand, the gas station. So there you go. Okay, let me match something up, I got to. Here's the screenshot of Leatherface popping through the window. Mr. Gunner Hansen played Leatherface. He's got a Pollen 306A chainsaw. That was the model of the chainsaw. But that is the window right there. Then and now. What is in there? Oh my gosh. Oh! Oh, that scared me. Oh, they, oh they're honoring Leatherface inside this window. Oh! And here goes nothing. Wow. Gonna go inside. I'm checking out the porch though. This is where Kirk picked up the tooth and showed Pam. Actually, right there in this vicinity. He was uh, knocking the knocking on the door and saw the tooth laying right there, if you remember that part. Oh my gosh, here's the staircase right here. <laughs> Hello, anyone home? Our friends. Oh, breakfast. Breakfast. And right here, the first time you see Leatherface, there was a door built between the end of the staircase to this wall just for the movie. And precisely right there, here's the screenshot. I'm gonna match it up the best way I can. Notice the staircase and the wall to the left. Now check out the door where Leatherface is standing. Right there, that's where he beat Kirk. It was right here, it was built just for the movie and it had a slide door it had, and it had like that cattle-like ramp right there. I always thought that looked like a cattle ramp. So they said it would be bizarre if someone didn't come by and either take photographs or film the inside of this house. This filming location is well visited by its fans, as it should be. And here's a screen grab I got of when Leatherface grabs Sally. You can make out the woodwork, the, uh, the post of the stairwell, and the doorway right there. Then, and now. That is so cool. And I'm recreating the camera angle when you see them bring Grandpa from down the stairs, or down the stairs, to the dinner table. Notice the woodwork of the steps is the exact same in the window right behind him. I'm now walking up the staircase from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface. Ran down and up the staircase with a chainsaw. Actually, that's my next screenshot right here. It's a very brief moment, but I paused the screen and grabbed it just right. Notice the woodwork over here recreating the camera angle, him holding the chainsaw coming up this way after Sally just jumped out this window. And a quick screen grab right before Sally jumps out the right window there. Notice the wallpaper is long gone. I like that wallpaper and the woodwork, the trim, the molding has been painted white, but it is the same woodwork. Definitely tell by the pattern there in the corner. Right there. That's it. And I'm recreating the shot, the camera uh, actually shooting through the railing here of the staircase. Leatherface about gets Sally just before she jumps out that window. 
right there. I'm recreating the shot here. Look at that. There's the window. And over here, it's changed a lot up here. But down over there to the left, that's where Grandpa was. Or should I say, is. Hey, Grandpa. You getting hungry? You haven't moved in almost 50 years. I say that puts you about. 160 maybe 70 something you were well over a hundred back in 1973 when they were filming the movie why did they release it almost a year later in 1974 it's a good question for grandpa oh my gosh that creeped me out <laughs> oh man this is about the same camera angle actually like this grandpa's sitting at a different angle today but this is the spot Oh, this, I'm creeped out. I'm up here all alone with Grandpa. And I think he's hungry. How you doing, Grandpa? It's good seeing you again. You getting hungry? That is a great Grandpa mask, by the way. It looks just like him. And another then and now screen grab of Leatherface coming down the stairs with this chainsaw. That Coca-Cola sign was not there in the movie. <laughs> and here's one of the clearest shots of this angle. You see of the staircase in the movie, Leatherface grabbing Pam and bringing her back to the hook. You can make out the curvature of the wall right here and also the woodwork in the staircase, the door behind them. Wow, right here. I'm standing exactly where the door was, the imported fake door. And this moment happened right inside there along the back wall. Oh man, that moment scared me. Right there on the back wall of the kitchen. They're cooking in there. Don't want to disturb them, but talk about a moment in horror history right there. That hurt us. We didn't even see it happen. And just the psychological trauma that did to our minds. Oh, we knew that movie was gonna do well. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the dining room from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It is said that this scene took almost 27 hours. So many takes, so many hours put into this precise scene when the whole family comes to dinner. And I'm sitting where Sally would have sat and I'm sharing with you a screenshot. Of course, Grandpa at the end of the table, right in the doorway, the doorway right behind him. And a moment before this scene is when he was sucking on her finger right over here in this corner. She was sat there originally and then when she woke up for dinner, she was facing everyone right here. 27 hours put into this scene. That's amazing. And Oh, and fun fact, the long table that sat here was made out of diving boards. The art director, Rob, Robert Burns, Bobby Burns, found a bunch of diving, door, diving boards and put them all together. If you look closely, you can tell that they were diving boards. Yeah, right here. And to the left, the kitchen where Pam was placed upon the hook over there, which is now a kitchen. And to the right, the bones room where all the feathers and grotesque stuff once happened. Ew, that scene creeped me out. I think if I were to eat here today, I would order a salad, just because I'm thinking of the film. <laughs> and right here in this very corner, where this table is sitting, this is where they were trying, where Grandpa was trying to hit Sally in the head with the hammer. And in that room where people are dining, that was the room of bones and disgust that Pam fell into. And in that center window, that is where Leatherface had his moment. And over at the Club Car Bar, they have the movie poster and more 8x10 screenshots of the movie on the wall. Oh, look at that. It looks like most of these have been signed. Oh, wow. It's signed by Gunnar Hansen right there. Rest in peace. He passed away, I believe, in 2015. And Marilyn Burns, who played Sally, signed this 8x10 right here that was out there in the dining room. Uh, unfortunately, she passed away tragically in 2014. She did a wonderful job in this movie. She has been credited to be one of the first 
final girls. And it looks like Leatherface is over here. He's one of the servers. He's got his apron on. Always does. Saw this guy through the window. He startled me. Check him out. Ooh, that's creepy. Oh, and check it out. There's a little chainsaw up here and some merchandise, of course. I've got all kinds of Texas Chainsaw Massacre t-shirts. And I like this one. Don't mess with Texas. Good old leather face. That's pretty funny. And here is the house as it last looked when it sat at Round Rock just before they dismantled it. Actually, here's a picture of them taking the roof off by crane. And they trucked it over here in six or seven pieces, I believe, back in 1998. And I left my sunglasses upstairs. Thankfully, thankfully Grandpa didn't take them. Thanks Grandpa, thanks for watching them. You were looking right at them too. That was a happy accident. I like your style, Grandpa. Go Rays. I think there's much ahead. All right. And a fun fact, this is a Sears and Roebuck catalog house. I'm doing the reverse angle of that iconic shot. Man, that was fun. That was so much fun. The Sawyer house. Bucket list checked off. I had a great time in there. Thank you. Shout out to everyone in there working today at the Grand Central Cafe and Club Car Lounge. They were so kind to me. Now passing over the Colorado River right here in Kingsland goes right through downtown Austin, by the way, and all the way out west. As you can tell by these flags, the wind is doing me no justice today. Or is it? Oh, it is fierce and it is cold. Welcome to Round Rock, Texas, just north of Austin. County Road 172 is the next intersection right down here. These roads were not here back during the time of the movie. Actually, they weren't here about 10 years ago. This road right here is Hainer Road and it cuts alongside and over from the driveway that led to the farmhouse, the filming location, the former house that was moved 61 miles away from here, sat right up here on this property. And the old County Road 172 where Leatherface did his dance and the hitchhiker got hit by the truck. It's right up here going this direction. You can make out some of the telephone poles right there. I am going to climb up into this property. The gates open and I'm going to see what I can match up. The house would have sat right up here. I'll I'll get a little close in a minute, but I wanted to put things in perspective. And also, the grandparents' house where the uh, kids travel to before they make it to the farmhouse with Leatherface would have sat right out here along old 172 as well. Out here where this uh, interstate is now. The gate's open. Oh, it's about to be closed because of the wind. I better get in there. All right, so I'm walking down alongside what used to be the former driveway back to the road. Holy cow, this is the road. This is all that is left of the stretch of road before the house. This is where the semi would have parked. The blue Chevy truck would have came and Sally jumped in at the end and Leatherface would have done his dance right out here. This is freaking awesome. Man, I can't believe it. This is so cool. Let's see if we can match up anything. At least the concrete's still here. The asphalt. Not going to be here for very much longer though. Someone has already purchased this property and it's about ready to go into development. That's why I'm out here, ladies and gentlemen. This is hard to match up then and now, but I'm standing in the road. I'm going to aim up this way. This is where I think the former driveway would have went. At that time, there would have been a fence just like this going up this way. There is, there is a little pathway here. I'm not so sure. I think this has shifted to the left a little bit. Now, it's been almost 50 years, so you have to use your imagination. But the house 
would have sat right there, just past the gate that I walked in. That means they would have popped out right here on the road and the semi would have came this way. Goodbye road, no longer there. The semi would have came right past the driveway, ran over the hitchhiker and would have parked right down here along the road. And here's the screen grab of when the semi truck parks right here in this very same spot. Notice the hill and the telephone pole. You can make out the telephone wires to the left of the truck from this screen grab. And Leatherface chases them into the truck. Allie and the truck driver climb out the opposite side, then Leatherface chases them back up the hill that direction. The truck driver nails Leatherface on the head with that pipe wrench and he falls down right before the former driveway right here in this area. And right here is where Leatherface fell to the ground dropping his chainsaw onto his thigh as he did so. And this is the only time you actually see the chainsaw blade hit human flesh. Yep, that's right. Even though it was grotesque, it was not that gory. It was all psychological. That's one of the most beautiful things, creepy beautiful things about this film, is there is not a lot of gore. Even though I wanted to throw up a million times watching it, not that gory. Nothing to match up but the road and the hill out on the horizon. But this is where you get this angle, the truck coming this way to the rescue. The big rig tractor trailer to the right here of the road. Leatherface gets up with the chainsaw and the trucker running this way. Very cool to stand here right now. Very awesome. And as the Chevy truck rescues Sally, it passes the big rig parked right here again. Leatherface coming after and then giving up about right here. And this is where. He does his dance. Fun fact, that scene took place in the morning, but in reality, it was filmed in the evening at sunset because you're looking at the west. Fun fact there for you, they filmed that scene at dusk, not dawn. Again, the house right up there. I grabbed this screenshot, I had to pause it just right, but Gunnar Hansen, performing his famous dance right here in this vicinity of the road. And I can't stand here and not recreate the chainsaw dance. Gunnar Hansen, ah, just imagine a chainsaw here. Ah, ah. As you can see, it's a windy day. Oh my gosh. The very last moment at the former filming location. Kind of getting emotional. The next time I come back to Texas, this probably will not, will not be here. The driveway. <laughs> Let's see if we can find some of the house or what's left of the foundation. And looky here. I found some old rock. This could have been part of the former foundation of the home before they moved it. Look, this is bored out. Something went through there. This is the only rubble I found near the, oh, that, see, there's a flat rock there. That's probably part of the old foundation of the house. Oh, that's so cool. Look, an old bottle. What's in there? Oh, disgusting. Now this is a PVC pipe, it's a lot newer, but if there was a well below the house, this was probably the former water line. Whoa. Yeah, exactly what I thought. The house used to sit right out here in this corner, disappearing right here among this intersection. Now in the movie, along the fence at the end, past the weather vane, there's a water tower. And if I'm thinking correctly, that line, that water line, could be sitting 
where that former water tower is and it lines up pretty well you gotta use your imagination weather vane water pipe house to the right the screen grab of Sally and the hitchhiker running down the road the truck would have been parked right here that means Leatherface would have ran right here down the former driveway like this Very cool to see this cacti out here because in the scene where Sally is uh, wheeling Franklin through the brush, you see a lot of these cactuses, these cacti. Found a piece of an old fence post right around the area where the former fence used to stretch along the driveway up to the old family house. And I am now down the hill on the far northeast side of this property. The former home would have sat up here on this ridge. I wanna show you that the creek bed, the dried creek bed slash ravine that you saw Kirk and Pam walk down and up out of in the beginning of the film, it is long gone. It would have been out here where all this was built up, this road. And the former for sale sign for the property that you will see on Google Earth has been knocked down, confirming that it has been sold. And thankfully today, they left the gate open for us to come check out the filming location. Thank you so much, whoever left that gate open, I appreciate it. And I'm sure everyone watching does too. The former Chainsaw Massacre House sits across, directly across from St. David's Surgical Hospital. The house was set right there. Oh, the irony. <laughs> oh man, a hospital. Surgical hospital. They were doing their own surgery over here. That's for sure. Coming to you live from the hurricane. Oh my gosh, I picked the day for this. I sure did. What a burger, I have to. A little pit stop. Where's the beef? 100% pure beef. Sure, that's what they said in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right, Leatherface? What a burger. Highway 685, specifically in between Hudo and Pflugerville, is where the hitchhiker scenes were filmed. Actually, specifically right here in front of present day Hudo High School is where the hitchhiker was picked up and movie magic also dropped off. And this location was found from a deleted scene of when Nub and Sawyer, the crazy hitchhiker, gets kicked out of the van. And right here in this screen grab, you can make out the hill just out beyond the road. And this is Highway 685. And this is how we were able to figure out that he was dropped off across from present day Hudo High School and he was picked up here. And this screen grab, the van is coming down a two lane farm road, now a six lane highway and you actually see the farm road sign, farm road 685, and this screen grab right here. I had to pause it precisely so you can make out the 685. Well, the sign right here said barbecue, so I had to stop. The windy day has taken out some of the letters here, but the Texas Chainsaw Gas Station is a bit of a roadside attraction, honoring the filming location, becoming a barbecue stand slash horror hideaway. There's cabins out here and you can stay in them. Right back there, sort of an Airbnb. And here we are at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre gas station. 1073 Highway 304 near Clearview, Texas. This is the gas station and the Wee Slaughter barbecue stand. I am so stoked. Okay, I'm gonna match up a ton of then and now screen comparisons here. I've got to. This is so cool. A similar angle here. Obviously the golf pumps are long gone. Things have changed, but check out the landing pad here for where the van was pulling in in this screenshot. Actually, you can make it out in the right corner as it's about to enter the screen. You've got the barbecue sign and the guy 
looking up into the sun as the van's pulling in and he takes the wash bucket and comes and wash their windows and that is when these uh, group of 20 somethings pull in here and realize there's no gas at the gas station but they have plenty of barbecue I like how they put all the props out here you got that can and of course the wash bucket with the guy oh in the chair too that he's sitting in when they all pull up in the van he goes to wash their window just pretend I'm gonna wash your window but we don't have any gas now this sign is just a replica but they did a great job we slaughter barbecue we slaughter here actually out back not too far from here. Now I pause the camera just right to get this camera angle. This is the only time you see the left side of the building of the gas station in the movie very briefly. But you can make out the roof right here and this, well, the window's gone, but you can make out this right here. This was added down there. Just a brief moment as the guy's washing the window from the cab of the van and also the truck would have been turned around the other way. Not that truck, similar truck, but right there. It's almost in the exact same spot. This old Chevy truck sits here. I doubt it's the same one from the movie, but it's about the same year. Late 40s, early 50s. It would have been white in the movie. We've got worms, that's what we're calling it. Notice worms on the door of the screenshot. Keep your eye on the door. Here's the door today. We're at a similar angle. The ladies are getting a Coke. Coke machine would have sat right there. In memory of those who went before us, here's a memorial slash bench right here where the Coke machine would have been during the time of the movie. Here, let me come over this way. It's hard to see. But check it out. There's an actual hammer there, a face, a chainsaw, and those who passed away I think, uh, yeah, in memory of those who passed away from the movie, you've got Gunnar Hansen, Leatherface, Jim Seidel, The Cook, Robert Corton, The Window Washer, Marilyn Burns, Sally, Paul Parton, Franklin, and Bob Burns, our director, and Toby Hooper. That's really cool. A memorial right here before the door. All right, I gotta take a picture with that. Oh, it says right down there, the saw is family. And there's the artist, Roy Rose and Eric Burris. I like that, it's very cool. Oh, wait a minute. Oh my gosh, it's the van. No way. I don't know if it's the exact van, but it looks like a 1972 Ford van, same color. This is so cool. I haven't gone inside yet, but I'm definitely gonna ask him how original this van is. Could be the original one. I don't know, is it a 72? I tried to open the door to check the VIN number. Sometimes you can tell that way. Put very cool, very similar to the van that once parked here in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was really cool. So when Sally escapes the farm the first time in the movie, she runs right to the gas station, and I've got a screenshot right here. Leatherface chasing her, and you can clearly make out the edge of the gas station, then and now, right there in front of Sally. And then you don't see Leatherface when Sally runs into the gas station. But I have some deleted scene footage that they cut out where you actually saw more of him in front of the gas station. So I thought I'd do some uh, then and now matchups with those. And here's the screen grab, Leatherface coming around the building after Sally, stopping about right there. And here we are today, Leatherface would've been standing right here. And he does his dance right here in the deleted footage his pouting dance like he does at the end of the movie in the deleted footage. And you can make out the golf gas pump right behind him in the screenshot, which would have been right out there. So technically, if it had made the film Leather's Face Dance, 
Gunnar Hansen did dance with a chainsaw right here. And one more screen grab from the deleted scene footage. This was right before that moment because you can still make out Sally's arm. Would have been right here. And here's a screen grab. When they're leaving the gas station, the pumps long gone, they would have been about right there. And that Gulf gas sign right out here before the corner no longer there as well. But they would have been heading south in reality. The Sawyer farm and their grandparents' house, Sally and Franklin's grandparents' house, is northwest of here. All right, I better go in. I am kind of hungry. I don't know if I'm going to get any barbecue though. But here we go. We slaughter. <laughs> they slaughter out back. Down the old farm road they do. Not too far from here, well, fictionally. Hello. Whoa, I didn't expect them there. <laughs> Hello, friends. <laughs> now, this is my kind of place. Not only do they serve barbecue, but they sell a lot of horror goods in here. Oh my gosh. Anything you can think of. This is like, a convention in a little building here. This looks like a vendor room at a horror convention. And it looks like the hitchhiker over here has made friends with Michael Myers in front of a replica. Looks similar to the Coke machine that sat out front. Cool that they have it in here. And on top of the Coke cooler, it looks like a 306A pollen, kind of like they used in the movie. If it's not, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Yeah. Uh, Roy likes to get as authentic as possible. Yeah. Good job, Roy. And over here in the corner, almost exactly like the ones we saw out here. Again, movie filmed in 1973, released in 74, almost like the same golf gas pumps. And the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They've got absolutely anything and everything in here, horror-esque. A lot of uh, dolls there and an abundant amount of horror t-shirts. I see a lot of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre ones in there, of course. Had fun with chainsaws. The original movie poster. This is cool. C is for chainsaw. Leatherface with a bunch of kids. That's awesome. <laughs> and this is like a, I believe the Japanese movie poster there on the t-shirt and all kinds of other ones. And the one I'm wearing, right there. Hey, I saw your new movie the other day. It was pretty good, I enjoyed it. All right, so there was a couple screen grabs I wanted to grab in the kitchen, but I was not permitted access to the kitchen. That's where Jim Seidel, the cook, rescues Sally as she runs in the door after being chased by Leatherface. In front of this window, there's a shot. You actually see this bench, not that one, but in a similar location, they did a good job re recreating the furniture out here. She runs in there with the cook and then finds out that he's in on the whole thing. But that was a that was a great scene. Jim Seidel, great actor. Everyone in this film, for not being anyone at the time, and when I say not being anyone, they, they hadn't done anything yet. They were all newbies to the big screen, except for Jim Seidel. They all did a great job. The van. And I got confirmation from the inside that this is a 1972 Ford van, the same model as was driven in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The only difference is the doors are different. They open differently. I believe it was a sliding door in the film. Very cool. What a day, what a day. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the filming locations for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. If you like filming locations and you wanna check out more of my filming locations, please go to my filming locations playlist on the main page of my YouTube channel. I like to do the horror ones. I like to do the movies I love to watch. And that's, that's fun for me. This is my zen, my therapy, coming out, reliving the movies, seeing the locations for myself. That is something I just enjoy doing. 
it's kind of crazy flying all the way out to Austin, Texas just to track down the locations of a movie. Well, that's who I am. <laughs> I love it. Can't get enough of it. All right, guys. Know you're awesome. Know you're loved. And know there's much ahead. And subscribe below if it's your first time here. This may have been your first time watching, so I always forget to say subscribe. So, come back now, you hear? I was gonna get some barbecue, but man, my stomach. <laughs> After watching the movie like five times this week, over and back, back to front, I don't think I've had uh, the stomach. I had the burger earlier, I did, but I don't know if I can do the barbecue. All right, maybe next time. Maybe I'll stay here one night. Oh no. I forgot to get gas. I thought they'd have gas out here. The pumps are gone. All right, guys, I hate to say it, but I ran out of gas. No! It's all right. I'll call AAA. No problem. Oh no, I don't have any service. Oh no, I'm not gonna do what everybody thinks I'm gonna do and freak out, man. No! Ah!